built the to-do list, the weather app, the calculator, and maybe you've even made a website with some user authentication. But let me ask you something. Did you actually learn how to solve a real problem? Because that is the difference between someone who can code and an actual software engineer. Today, I'm gonna show you why you need to stop coding these random projects and start building and thinking like a startup to drastically increase your leverage and value as a software engineer. Let's get into it. So if you're new, my name is Zazo. I've been coding for over 10 years and I've been in the tech industry for about eight years doing a wide range of different positions from software engineering all the way to data engineering and data analytics. So before I start on the first thing, let me level set and let you know those apps that I mentioned are not bad for learning. And those are the steps you should take. But if you're past that point of learning syntax and the basics of code, you need to start leveling up and we're gonna get into that now. So like I said, the first thing is that random projects such as the ones I mentioned, the to-do list, the expense tracker. These are projects that teach you syntax. They don't actually teach you problem solving. Most of those projects are just to teach you how to learn a language, a framework, and that's pretty much it. So you get comfortable with building something in that language or framework, but they don't actually teach you how to think. It'll make you ask different questions like, who am I making this for? What's the actual pain point that I'm solving? How do I validate my idea? Make sure that the market actually wants what I'm going to make. How do I prioritize one feature over another? And thinking like this is actually where the real growth happens. So real projects actually force you to think like a product owner, which is more of how the actual workforce will want you to think. So let me give you what I mean by this. When you build something like a startup, you're doing more than just writing code because software engineering is the same. You're not just writing code as a software engineer, you're solving real problems and you have to think like a product owner. So you're solving logistics stuff, UX issues, you know, how is this going to be monetized? How are we going to keep people on the platform? How are we going to keep people using our product? You know, you actually have to struggle and that's a great thing. You'll have to write less perfect code in order to ship more imperfect features. And that experience, it mirrors what companies actually look for in a software engineer because companies are most of the time using this agile type of framework where you're moving in two week sprints. And in that sense, they are looking for something every two weeks that you're able to bring to the table, a new feature or something of that sort. So you're needing to move fast and prioritize certain features over others to get that end product finished. So with this, you'll actually learn to prioritize a real world project will teach you the concept of trade-offs, right? Is it worth adding authentication yet? What about responsiveness? Is my application actually, is it detrimental to my application to not to it not being responsive at this point? Or can that wait till a later release? Or does this feature have to come before the responsiveness? So on and so forth. Do I need an actual really cleaned up dashboard or where will a pure simple just data dump do at this point to learn to build the minimum in order to test your idea before you ever create this whole big thing without ever validating whether or not the market even wants it and this is what is so important in tech whether you're a freelancer you know you're trying to start your own SaaS product or even working in the industry this type of mindset is what companies are looking for. And these startup projects become real key pieces of your portfolio. Everybody has done the expense tracker, the calculator, and all of these different types of things. And like I said before, they're great for learning. But when it comes to getting hired, building a SaaS product or a product that you've had to go through all these different steps and all these different learnings and kind of think in these different ways, that's what employers are actually looking for because in the day-to-day -day, you are solving real problems every company is not hiring you to make a calculator they're using the calculator that came with windows or mac right you have to solve real problems and with that comes 
thinking like you're solving real problems at all times. This is what software engineers get paid to do. So with this, you don't have to go crazy and try to solve the next social media problem. It can be something in your own life, in your friend's life, or even something that you know you would pay money for yourself. And what this kind of shows is I don't just code, I solve problems. And that is what employers look for. So you may be asking, okay, that sounds good and that's great. So how do I start thinking like this, right? So these are some things you need to ask yourself. Like I said before, what is a problem that I or someone I know has every week? What's a process that sucks and could be automated or made so much better? Or something like if there was a tool like this, I would pay $5 or I would pay $10 to have a tool like this. Those are the questions that can start actually forming those ideas of what you can build next. And then after that, literally just build it. it. Doesn't have to scale. It doesn't have to be the most beautiful. It just needs to function and work. All of those things can come last after that. This is really good because on your actual interview or when it's on your portfolio, you can speak to it in a better tone or you can speak about it in a better way just because if you built a calculator just for the sense of building a calculator just to code, it's very hard to be passionate or really speak too much on that. You're just basically, I built this calculator because I was learning how to code or it's the same thing with university, right? Everybody builds, you know, this, this big project at the end and you're able to speak to it. Yes, I was able to do these different things, but in reality, why did you do that? Because I had to get my degree, right? There's no real why behind it. There's nothing passionate. There's no real problem. The problem that you're trying to solve there is you're just trying to get your degree and do as minimal work as possible in order to do that. And that's what you did. And there's nothing wrong with that because you're learning. But after the point of learning, being able to speak to certain things, I'll give an example of mine. And very early on, when I was starting my coding journey, I made an automated Python script that just cleaned out my downloads folder because working remotely, there was a lot of files that were pumping up there. And even though it's so simple as just doing that, it was a real problem that I had because I didn't like seeing stuff there. Even something as simple as that. So just imagine making something even bigger. I'll give you another one. So during COVID, there was obviously a lot of stuff that was going down and everything was shut down. So I got really bored, but I knew that there was a way to make money in the stock market because it was the one the biggest crash that has ever happened besides, you know, 2008 and all that. Um, I think it was bigger than that. I don't really know. But anyways, I knew that that was a point where I can make real money. So I started doing discounted cash flows on pen and paper. Then I realized that why would I keep doing this on paper when I have my coding background and I can just whip up, you know, a an actual calculator to solve this problem. Now, in my interview, I was able to speak to that so passionately that you could see that I was solving a problem, even though nobody in the room was dealing with stocks or cared that much about that, but they could see that it mattered to me and they could see it was a real world problem that I was having in my life, which is way better than just sitting back and just doing the expense tracker and all these different things that have already been done before and everybody's just doing the same thing. So start thinking like a startup and start asking yourself these questions and you'll be way better off as a software engineer. Thank you for watching the video. Love, peace, and chicken grease. I'll see you on the next one.